This is the E5 12400F, the people favorite. A CPU that we love for its incredible performance per dollars. You can still find it today for around 100 bucks. Yep, this is $100 for 6 cars, 12 tri trip that we came out for 3 years ago. That's pocket change for the rich. But if you broke like me, that's 100 bucks his difference. So, in this video, we are going on a little quest to find a cheaper alternative. Something that's called just one tenth of the price, yet somehow managed to beat E5 12400F in a few games. Sounds crazy, right? Let's unbox it and see what this mystery CPU actually is. Here it is, the Xeon E5 2618V4, a CPU made for server and workstation, released back in 2016. So, the real question is, are you really willing to drop a lot of cash on a brand new CPU where the gaming performance might not even be better than the older one you can swag for the 10 times less? Let's dive into whether the E5 2680V4 is actually a deal or just a bet on the past. Let's break down the spec of these two CPU. First up, the E5 2680V4. This monster pack 40 cores and 28 treats. However, when it comes to gaming, the sheer numbers of cores doesn't always challenge to bad performance since most modern games typically utilize only to 4 to 6 cores. Now, the E5 12400F is at 6 cores and 12 treats, while that fewer cores than E5 2680V4. The E5 12400F benefits from hybrid tradings, which help with multi taxings Let's talk about the clock speed in single core performance now. E5 2680V4 it has a base clock of 2.4 GHz with the ability to boost up to 3.3 GHz when overclock. What it is pretty solid for heavy multitasking and computational tasks in gaming, single core performance is a key. E5 12400F It starts at 2.5 GHz but it can boost up to 4.4 GHz with a significantly higher boost clock. The E5 12400F Sign in gaming where single core performance matter most. Technologies and optimizations. The E5 2680V4 is a work well Xeon built for several great and multi treats workloads but work for gaming. The E5 12400F on Adelec support modern tech like PCLE 4.0 and DDR5, making it more efficient for gaming and modern applications. TDP and energy efficiency. The E5 2680V4 has a high 120W TDP, consuming more power than dual to its many core, which is fine for server but less idea for gaming. In contrast, the E5 12400F is much more energy efficient with 65 watt CDP, making it perfect for gaming PCs while keeping power and cooling requirement low. To these two CPU, I prepared the setup. First, both we set the same GTX 1017 8GB GPU and a 1TB NVMe SSD with Windows and game already installed. So cooling will be handled by OT400E air coolers. We will be using a Taurus 715 watts power supply. For the E5 2680V4, I'm using an X99 TF Qui motherboard with 16GB of RAM running at 2400MHz. While the E5 2400F will be paired with E716 MF and 60GB of RAM at 2200MHz. To really highlight the performance difference, let's drive into the Cinebench R15. Based on the result, it's really to see the performance gap between these two processors. The Intel Xeon E5 2680V4 scored around 48 multi-core points and 137 single-core points. With its high-core thread count, this CPU excels in multi-thread tasks like rendering, emulations, or heavy workloads. 
However, its single core performance is relatively weak, only meeting basic standard by modern benchmark. On the other hand, the Intel Core E5 2400F stands up with 791 multi-core points and 245 single-core points, near double the single-core performance of E5 2680V4s. This makes a huge difference for gaming and applications that rely on fast single threads processing. The E5 2680V4 might seem a bit weak compared to the E5 2400F. With how that is fair in gaming, the result will surprise you. First up in Valorant, both of the highest system. Surprisingly, the E5 2480 V4 performs almost on pair with the E5 2400F. Looking at the FPS, the E5 2400F is above 200 FPS, sometimes nearing 300, while the E5 2680 V4 is around 270 FPS during normal movement but drop to 160 FPS during combat, stabilizing around 200 FPS. The Xiaomi is only running at about 50 to 60 usage, while the E5 2400 is pushing closer to 40%. In the PUBG test of the lower setting, the performance difference between the two CPUs is quite noticeable. The E5 2400F averaged 150 FPS, significantly outperforming the Xeon E5 2680 V4 at 128 FPS, a difference of nearly 30 FPS. The E5 also had a higher clock speed, giving an edge in single thread tasks like PUBG. Additionally, the newer E5 is more power efficient, using 16% less power and consuming less RAM, while the CEO maintains lower tens and reasonable power consumptions, its low clock speed and weak single core performance hold it back in PUBG. Conclusion The E5 2400F is a better choice for those prioritizing higher FPS and smooth gameplay in shooter games like PUBG. In the micro performance test with the GTX 1078GB, the results saw a clear difference between the two CPU. The Xeon E5 2680V4 is around 160fps, running at a clock speed of about 3.0GHz, using only 6% of its power. Besides like that, Minecraft mainly relies on single-core performance, and the Xeon doesn't always fully until the size is multi-core advanced. The E5 2400F with its modern architectures hit 120 FPS despite higher clock speed of nearly 4.1 GHz. It's true to the Xeon by almost 40 FPS. What an interesting that Minecraft a bit of OPPO in terms of optimizations. It can be heavily dependent on catch and single trade performance. This gives Xeon with a large catch and 40 cores an E with an E5 2400F despite its single core strength. I guess likely bottleneck in busy block sends or heavy shader load. After testing a few games, we can see FPS on Xeon E5 2680V4 sometimes outperforms the E5 2400F. However, due to its lower IPC and clock speed, the stability of E5 2680V4 can match the E5 2400F and stability is what truly determines whether your gaming experience will be smooth or not. That said, the Xeon E5 2680V4 has advanced of being paired with affordable X99 motherboard and SEC RAM, which makes it a great choice for bucket optimizations. But if aesthetic matter to you, the E5 2680V4 might not be the best option as big components don't feature RGB or flashy design. But remember, cheaper doesn't always mean worse, and more expensive doesn't always mean better. The key is choosing what right for your needs and budget. That's all I want to share with you guys. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channels. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.